Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome back to another Docker tutorial. This tutorial is for anyone who is maybe starting to utilize Celery and is having problems in Windows connecting to a RabbitMQ or a Redis server. I'm going to take you through the quick steps of Dockerizing RabbitMQ in Windows so that you can connect your Celery, Celery? Your Celery application to the RabbitMQ server. So I'm assuming you've got Django or you know how to start a Django project or you're currently running a Celery project and you're trying to connect to a RabbitMQ server. So all you need to do here before we start is to download Docker Desktop for Windows. It's really simple. Just type that into Google. Go ahead to the download page, download it, install it, and we're ready to start. So don't worry if you're completely new to Celery and you're just trying to get the server started or start with Celery. Head over to the channel and just search for RabbitMQ. I think that's pretty much all we're going to need here. That's going to go with this here. So this tutorial here takes you through how to get started with Celery and RabbitMQ. And it's, I think it's done on a, a Linux host. However, you could run through that and it still work on Windows. However, obviously we want to now install or get a RabbitMQ server started. So if you head into that, this is going to take you to a link here some good commands here to utilize. So go ahead and go to this repository link. And this is the starting code that we're going to work with. So go ahead and download and get it started in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so here it is. It's just a simple application. I'll just quickly take you through this. I have started a, a virtual environment. So py minus m vem vem. That'll start a virtual machine. And then that, you need to go ahead and actually then just activate that. So we're working inside of there. And then just pip install. Actually, I don't think there's a pip install. Okay, there is. There is now. So um, just go ahead and pip install minus R or the R flag and then requirements. So just go ahead and install that. Um, okay, so I think that's that's everything installed. Maybe, maybe not there. Okay, right. So once that's done, we're let's just start the server. See if it works. Yep, no problem. Okay, so in actual fact, if we go back to if we go back to the the web here in that previous tutorial, um, there's loads of great commands which would be really handy. So I'm just going to grab them and create a new file here called text. This will be available when you download the repository. There we go. So let's go ahead now and just start the Celery service, see if we can. So we shouldn't be able to. So you can see here that it's tried to connect. It's trying to connect to a server here. It's using the default port and it's looking for RabbitMQ. So yeah, at the moment there's an error. It can't connect to it. So all we're going to try and do in this tutorial is now download a RabbitMQ image, which is going to be the server. And we're just going to start it up, set the ports, and we'll be ready to go. So just quickly take you through this project. If you are new to Celery, uh, we have the project file here, which is the main Django project file with the settings. There's just one setting change here, really. That's the, sec of, um, the Celery Broker URL that we've set. So it's going to be utilizing the default port 5672 on RabbitMQ. We can change the port there if we want to, if we want to set different ports, etc. But that's pretty much the only setting we have there. Now inside of here, we've got the Celery uh, configuration. So take a look at that. That's uh, connected to Celery. And in addition to that, we then have in the app, we've got tasks. And here you can see we've just got one task, which is adding two numbers together. That's pretty much the only task that we have. So it's just a basic app. Again, that previous tutorial I mentioned that would take you through the steps to get to you get you to this point. So installing or utilizing RabbitMQ on Docker is so simple. Assuming again you've got assuming you've got Docker desktop installed now, if you just type in RabbitMQ Docker and then go over to the Docker Hub, here's the official image. So in actual fact, it gives us all the information we need down here, how to kind of quickly get this started if we didn't want to kind of deal with any of the, of the other configuration. So in actual fact, we can just run this command here. I've just 
just seen this um, command here so let's go ahead and utilize this and then all we actually need to do here is just tailor this slightly so let's just paste it here so this is a docker command that we're going to utilize so this port here what we're going to do is we're going to open up the port or we're going to direct the 5672 port to the same port that's on the docker machine so let's remember that this when we spin this up this image is going to be downloaded from docker hub and then it's going to be run run in a container so we're going to run rabbit mq in a container now there's no way in or no way out to that container unless we set these ports here so this is going to direct the traffic in and out and define what traffic can go in and out of the container so i'm just going to ignore these other settings for now uh, so that's the most important thing we could slim this down in actual fact but we're just going to run with that for now and not make it any more complicated than that so this is a command that's going to run docker and you can see that we are going to download the rabbit mq uh, image from docker and then it's going to start a new container automatically with these port numbers um, assigned so that we can access from our Django application inside of the container and so on. So let's go ahead and I'm not too sure what and so on means there, but let's go ahead and just run this. So I'm just going to open up command prompt. I'm going to put that command right there and it says unable to find image locally. So what's going to happen now is going to look at the Docker Hub where we were previously. So it's going to look here and it's then going to download the, the respective image. So that's going to take a few seconds to do. You can now see in Docker desktop here that I've got the RabbitMQ image downloaded, 186 meg. And if I go into containers, I now have my container working. It's running on port 5672. So that's the default port, remember. So let's go back into my Django application here. I'm just going to run the same command again. I'm going to get rid of this. Oh, actually, I'll, I'll put that in the, the text file here, wherever that went. Command text. So I'll just put that there. So that's the command. Right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just run the Celery Worker again. So this time you can see that it tells me that I'm connected to the server. So in actual fact, we're now connected to the RabbitMQ server. So we're up and running. So what we can probably go and do now in actual fact is just open up a new window. So let's go ahead and start a task. So we're just going to add the two numbers together. Remember our task basically just takes in two parameters here and adds them together. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So let's go back into our salary. You can see that it's been processed. It's received the task and it's processed the task. Okay, so I'm assuming you're new to Docker Desktop. So what happens now when you're finished? Well, let's go into images. We can see we downloaded the image. If we go into containers, a container is actually running RabbitMQ. So let's go ahead and just uh, delete this. Let's remove this. I'm not entirely sure why that isn't deleting. Uh, so let's go back into our image. So say we wanted to start it up again. Well, we did download the management version. So in actual fact, we do actually have a login. So let's go ahead and try that. So this was the command we used earlier to access now port 5672. So we're utilizing that port for Celery. So we do have other ports available in RabbitMQ. So one of them being 15672, so the management port here. So we're going to map that across now to 8080 so that we can log in. So let's just go ahead and run this command again. Now we'll do this in the internal here. So we'll go ahead and run that command. And this time what's going to happen is that we've already got the image, so it's not going to download again. We start the container, but this time we now have access to the admin area. So we can type in our local and then go to 8080 and now we can log in so the username and password is guest guest just have a little read there it tells you right here over at github sorry at the um docker hub here so now we're logged in so there isn't too much for beginners to have a look here um you can see it uh, working so for example if we were to run a load of tests here 
you're going to see it's going to start uh, jumping up with the, the message rate, for example. Uh, so that allows you to at least log into the RabbitMQ control panel. Now we know how to restart uh, very clearly the um, container and everything is still working. So all good. So that was just a quick start with Dockerize and RabbitMQ. So you can just get started utilizing Celery. If you're having problems, like I said, running RabbitMQ in Windows, which I think now the latest versions, you can't do that anyway. So now you've got an alternative, Dockerizing RabbitMQ in Windows so you can connect your Celery application. So I do apologize if you're looking for some more detail. Hopefully I explained it clearly enough at the start of a tutorial. It's just a, a quick guide just to get started. If there are any other tutorials that you're thinking about or need or would like to see, please let me know in the comments and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.